1967, Lou Rawls won his first Grammy for Best R&B Vocal Performance for his song, Dead End Street. In the same year, he also lost a paternity suit regarding a seven-year-old daughter who he was not claiming. And boy, was he a sore loser. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. We'll start this story at the end. If you Google Lou Rawls children today, you'll see this as one of the names, Kendra Rawls. She is the child at the heart of this paternity suit. What is strange to me is that you'll see Lana Jean Taylor listed as her mother. Whether that is a mistake or an intentional act to somehow erase the real mother or erase this paternity suit from history, it is definitely wrong. You'll see shortly. In 1967, Los Angeles judge Albert Matthews ruled that Lou Rawls was the father of seven-year-old Kendra Patrice Rawls. The judge also issued a temporary child support order that required Lou Rawls to pay $200 per month until a permanent order could be put in place. Usually, family sticks together, but during this case, the stepsisters of Lou Rawls, Marion Morris and Eunice Price, both testified against him. Eva Ballard Merriweather, not Lou's first wife, Lana, was the mother of the seven-year-old girl and the plaintiff in this case. She said that just before moving to California, and meeting Lou Rawls, she was the girlfriend of Lou Rawls' stepbrother, Robert Lee Beale. According to her, the two of them broke up on the day that she moved to California. That was in August of 1959. Mrs. Eunice Price, Lou Rawls' sister, later testified that Lou Rawls and Eva Merriweather hit it off instantly and started sleeping together practically as soon as they met. How would she know this? because they were sleeping with each other in her house, according to her testimony. Lou and Eva were sleeping together in Mrs. Price's bedroom during the month that Kendra was conceived and the months surrounding her conception. She testified, quote, they came to my house around 12 and they went into the bedroom, end quote. She said that the following morning, she saw her brother, Lou Rawls, come out of that same bedroom. There was also testimony from a man named John Butts, who Jet Magazine weirdly pointed out was the only Caucasian to testify. John Butts told the court that he was a former public assistance investigator. He was working in that position in 1960 when the plaintiff, Eva Merriweather, applied for welfare support for her daughter. Because Lou Rawls was the suspected father, John Butts asked him to come to his office for a meeting that would include the child's mother as well. Lou Rawls arrived at the appointment before Eva Merriweather. Later, he said that Lou Rawls signed a document promising to pay $10 a week in child support. Later, Eva Merriweather arrived at the office of John Butts, and according to John Butts, when she got there, Lou Rawls said, quote, Now that she's here, I'll admit it, she's mine, end quote. Eva Merriweather, the child's mother and plaintiff, testified that she and Lou Rawls had sexual relations two to five times a week during July and August, when she became pregnant. Eva Merriweather said that in September of 1960, Lou Rawls contributed $110 to the support of his daughter, and nothing more than that. Even though there was already testimony from the child's mother and his own sisters that Lou was sleeping with Eva Merriweather, he still tried to deny paternity. Even though the welfare investigator had testified that Lou Rawls had already admitted to being Kendra's father years ago and agreed to pay to support her, a very small sum, might I add, nevertheless, he admitted to that investigator that Kendra was his child and signed a document agreeing to support her in 1960. But here he was on trial in 1967 and acting as if none of what his sisters and the investigator testified had ever happened. When it was time for Lou Rawls to take the witness stand, he flat out denied that he was Kendra's father. Well, the blood test did reveal in the end that Lou Rawls was indeed the father of young Kendra. Lou Rawls, you are the father. 
and you will pay $200 a month for child support. After the verdict was read, he blamed the outcome on his stepsisters, who, by the way, did not speak to him or his wife during the hearing. His stepsisters? It seems to me that the blame would lie in his wayward pee-pee. When all was said and done, he whined to the media, quote, that's my family in there. I'm all alone. Can you believe that? End quote. I'm not at all inclined to have any sympathy for a man who doesn't claim or take care of his children. My only sympathy in this story lies with the little girl who was at the case, hearing her father deny that she belonged to him. I wonder how she felt that day. Before any of you ask me, because I can already see the comments coming, Lou was not married at the time that Kendra was conceived. But yes, I do think that the revelation of the sexual relationship that he had with Eva and the fact that a daughter was born from it would have been a lot for his wife to handle. Fun fact, the Lou Rawls song for which he won his first Grammy that I mentioned at the top of this video, Dead End Street, one of its lyrics was heavily sampled by 50 Cent and Joe for the most memorable part of the theme song to the hit TV show Power. My sources for this video are Jet Magazine and the Associated Press. If you want text notifications so that you can get a text 15 minutes before I release a video or 15 minutes before I live stream, simply send a text to 786-632-2135 to let me know that you want text and you will get an outgoing text message 15 minutes before I have a new video release. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, Feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.